The Shikalabwe mine is nestled in the heart of the Democratic Republic of Congo and occupies a unique but largely obscure place in world history. The unassuming site of a uranium ore mine that was a unsuspecting catalyst for reshaping world politics. If you like stories like this, you can find more stories like this at onemichistory.com. Also, if you like to support the channel, you can do so on my Buy Me Coffee on my Patreon page in the description below. Give us five stars on our podcast and support the YouTube channel. But without further ado, let's get started. The tale of Shikalabwe begins during the reign of Belgian King Leopold II when Robert Wood Sharp, an explorer seeking copper, stumbled upon a deposit filled with colorful minerals that turned out to be uranium in 1915. By 1922, the mining operations were being controlled by a conglomerate named the Union Minier du Hat de Conga, or the UMHK, which initially focused on extracting radium, which is a byproduct of the radioactive decay of uranium. Ironically, at the time, the uranium was considered nearly worthless. The mine's geopolitical significance escalated, though, in 1938, when three chemists made a pivotal discovery. They found the capability to split the uranium atom. The ensuing release of energy was so immense that it harbored a terrifying potential to create a bomb of unparalleled destructive capacity. However, before this bomb could be manufactured, there were several technical obstacles that needed to be overcome. The realization that the Germans may overcome those obstacles was a matter of great concern for Albert Einstein, and it was this apprehension that spurred him to write a letter to Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1939 about this potential peril. This letter played a crucial catalyst in the United States' effort to construct their own atom bomb. But initially, the endeavor was proceeding at an extremely slow pace. But in 1940 and 1941, United States' efforts towards this endeavor were significantly propelled by two major discoveries. And it was these discoveries that led to the groundbreaking Manhattan Project in December 1941. This project was a scientific and military initiative to develop an atom bomb, but it was Albert Einstein's 1939 letter that served as a stark warning about the potential of the use of uranium by Nazi Germany to manufacture these formidable weapons. This warning initiated a worldwide race to secure the global supply of uranium, with this most notably concentrating on Shikalabwe. Similar mines in the United States and Canada were considered good quality if they yield uranium ore of 0.03%, but Shigalabwe ore were yielding in 65% uranium, even waste piles of rock being too poor to bother processing, known as tailings, contain up to 20% uranium, a figure that is still significantly higher than any of the yields at other mines. The richness of this ore was such that by 1937, the company had stockpiled so much radium and uranium, they thought they had satisfied the anticipated demand for the next 30 years, leading to the closure of Chicalabwe. However, in September 18th, 1942, one of the most important transactions of World War II occurred in Midtown Manhattan. The Belgian company, the Societal General, offered to sell the Chicalab uranium to the United States Army for slightly more than $1 a pound. Through this agreement, the United States secured 1,200 tons of Congolese uranium to be stored in Staten Island with an additional 3,000 tons situated above ground in the Congo. However, this stockpile proved to be insufficient, and the United States recognized the immense potential of the right to control Shikalab uranium would hold over the tide of World War II. And a meeting culminated between President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Winston Churchill, which led to the Quebec Agreement, whereas a $10 million contract went to the UMHK and the United States subsequently monopolized Shikalab uranium production. The United States Army subsequently deployed engineers to reactivate the abandoned mine by draining it. And under the Belgian governance, Congolese workers were made to work laboriously in an exposed pit, facilitating the transportation of hundreds of tons of uranium ore to the United States on a monthly basis. The entire operation occurred under the umbrella of secrecy as to not alert the Axis powers of the ongoing Manhattan Project. Measures were taken to eliminate every trace of the Shikalabwe from maps and deploying spies to spread disinformation and changing the operational terminology, code words. The mine furnished nearly two-thirds of the uranium, with the rest coming from Colorado and Canada used in the bomb dropped on Hiroshima on August 6, 
1945 and supplied much of the plutonium that was used to drop on Nagasaki just three days later. Tragically, in all of this, the Condoleezza workers were being subjected to severe exploitation despite the existence of the Belgian colonial charter, which explicitly prohibited forced labor for commercial gain. Local men and women were being thrust into dangerous and grueling conditions, with often mandated they worked in dimly lit, poorly constructed spaces with barely functioning ventilation systems. Additionally, the lack of adequate protection against the numerous health risks, including lung cancer, linked to extreme uranium exposure. Furthermore, radioactive dust emanated from the mining activity polluted the local agriculture and the water supply, escalating health risks exponentially clearly demonstrating a complete disregard for the well-being of the mine workers and the local population. After the war, Shikala became the key location for the Cold War. Better techniques for processing made Western countries less reliant on Shikala waste uranium. However, the mine still needed to be controlled to stop other countries from developing nuclear weapons. When Patricia Lumba, the Congo's first elected prime minister, promised in 1960 to stop foreigners from taking advantage of the country's resources. This essentially went against American and Belgian interests. Consequently, both countries clandestinely conspired to overthrow the democratically elected government and install Mobutu Sese Siko in 1965, leading to significant destabilization in the Congo, followed by years of systematic corruption, political turmoil, and conflict, plunging an already impoverished society into further turmoil. Mobutu was eventually toppled in 1997 but the specter of Shikalab continues to haunt the Democratic Republic of Congo. Today, despite the official closing of the mine in 1960 and the subsequent end of uranium extraction, it has proved difficult to find a method to safely and efficiently extract the bounty of mineral wealth in Shinobekwe and return those profits to the Congolese people. The 2011 Fukushima disaster further dwindled any lingering interest in harnessing the site's uranium for non military use. Its uncontrollable nature, even in its raw form, paints Shikalab as a symbol of geopolitical instability inherent to uranium. Currently, Shikalab Way Mine stands in a state of limbo, caught between its past and an uncertain future. Thank you. This is Country Boy, and this has been One Mike History. I know this story was a little bit outside of my normal black history, but I hope you enjoyed it, and please consider, please consider Please consider listening to my other stories at onelikehistory.com. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by buying me coffee on my Patreon page in the description below. Follow us on Apple Podcasts and listen. Follow us on Apple Podcasts and check out the YouTube channel. Peace.